Hi, my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. It is the end of April, finally. Gosh, this month was hard. It was a challenging month. It was, it was more, I think, a test of like mental stamina almost. It was hard. And, and unfortunately for Michigan, <laughs> We're not we're not out of this yet. Our our shelter in place order got extended uh, halfway through May, so so we're still under shelter in place until at least May 15. And and then I don't know maybe maybe we'll get a break for a while. But it's the end of April, which means it's time for an empties video. But before we get into it, let me tell you what I'm drinking. So I am sipping. Rhubarb and custard from Bird and Blend. It says this is a tangy rhubarb and creamy custard guilt-free sweet treat. And this is a blend of rooibos, rhubarb pieces, calendula, vanilla pieces, and flavor. So I think this is like the sixth blend of my 30 blends <laughs> that I've tried. And so far this is my least favorite. And that's not to say that it tastes bad. It's just, I don't think it lives up to its name. To me, all I can really taste is the rooibos, uh, which luckily I like rooibos. I don't taste tangy rhubarb, and the custard element, it doesn't, it doesn't really come across as custardy to me. Just, just rooibos with, with a hint of vanilla. Not even enough vanilla for it to be like a vanilla rooibos. So let's go ahead and dive into my April empties. The first of my April empties is this tube of Assam black tea. This was just from a Trader Joe's tea sampler pack that I received a couple of Christmases ago. And I mean, it tasted like Assam black tea. I mean, it was, it, I like Assam black tea, so it was good. Next, I sipped this China Jasmine tea from T2. And the only reason why I really drank this was because Samantha Robinson online's uh, quarantine Instagram challenge and I don't even remember what day I, I, I drank this for maybe it was just like flavored green tea or any green tea I don't really like Jasmine that much that being said this really was not bad next is a candy apple from Adagio teas and believe it or not this is gonna be the only Adagio teas blend that shows up in this video. Somebody that I follow on Instagram put a new term into my head to describe teas and that is a sleeper tea. And that is to describe a tea that you kind of forget about until you drink it and you're like, gosh, that's really good. That's how I feel about candy apple. I've had this in my collection for probably over a year and and like I drink it and I'm like, oh, that's really good. But then for some reason, I just, I don't reach for it again for several months later. It's a pretty tea forward blend and that the back, and that the black tea base is really prominent, but the flavoring is like spot on. I mean, this, this, it's, it is really a candy apple flavor. It's, it's really delicious. This is one that I prefer sweetened and um, it gives me like, autumn vibes. This is this is a tea that I will order again like in October. It's just it's this tea to me is just it's autumn. It's 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 autumn festivities. Next is this Feng Huang Milan Oh goodness. It's a honey orchid oolong. So this comes from Wudong Teas over on Instagram. I think out of the four samples that I received from Wudong Tea, this one was probably one of my favorites. It was just sort of floral and honey malty. I did use my Gaiwan to sip this one. I don't think that I really noticed like layers of flavors uh, revealed through the different infusions. It was just sort of a consistent floral and honey malt flavor, but still really nice. Next, I finished up my Kukicha, which I received in my seven days of spring box. And if you haven't seen that video, Feel free to check it out, but um, <laughs> I really like I really like Kukicha. It's sort of like if Sencha and Gyokuro had a baby, but like that baby was kind of chill and mellow. That's how I would describe Kukicha. Like it's there's a little there's a little bit extra sweetness to it, and while there is a little bit of umami, it's not like as intense as what you would find in a Gyokuro, but it's still present. 
It also just doesn't carry the price tag like a Gyokudo does. So I actually do see myself buying Kukicha again. I'm glad that this was introduced to me. Thank you, Tea Thoughts. I experienced a Jinjun Mei for the first time. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, and this comes from Crafted Leaf Teas. Just, just the company that I'm like currently obsessed with. I feel like every single tea that I've had from Crafted Leaf is just really nice. Jinjun Mei, I had it for the first time a few weeks ago and I only had enough. I only had five grams, so I've only, I've only, I was only able to uh, do one Gaiwan session with it. I have not stopped thinking about this tea ever since. It's cocoa and honey malt with a honeydew melon and grape finish. Like, I don't even know how those flavors happen all at once, but it did. And like, my mind just was like, Poof. it was so good, so good. I have tried to find this since, and either the tea sellers just don't have it right now, or if they do, it's like ridiculously expensive. Like on Harney and Sons, it was, I don't even remember like how much tea it was, but it was $108, and that was on sale. <laughs> but I didn't buy it. Uh, that would not be a fun conversation to have with my husband. Yeah, I, I did find I did find a more reasonably priced sample through Verdant Teas, so I'm I'm really excited about that. That should be arriving any day now, and I'm I'm really excited to be diving into Jin Jun Mei again. It'll be interesting to see how that compares with Crafted Leaf, but I I am just like <sighs> this is probably one of my favorite most recent tea discoveries. So I finished up my cardamom macchiato from a David's Tea, and I guess this is a discontinued blend, which is a shame because I actually kind of liked this one. I guess I don't know if it's really a blend that I liked enough to buy again like I do their cotton candy, but I, I turned to this one a lot when I wanted to be productive because I kind of associate coffee and the flavor of coffee with productivity. Like I said, I'm a reformed coffee drinker. Some habits are hard to break. And this kind of like, this, this kind of fit the bill. So this is a blend of white tea, black tea, cardamom, seed and husk, apple, coffee beans, rose hips, and natural and artificial flavoring. And this was sort of like, I mean, the two most dominating flavors were cardamom and coffee. And this is a tea that I prefer sweetened which makes sense because this is uh, sort of a, 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 this is sort of inspired by Turkish coffee, which Turkish coffee is really sweet. However, I have tried to reduce the amount of sugar that I am consuming lately. And so the last couple of cups that I had of this, I drank unsweetened and it just didn't have like the same feel. So this is one that I definitely preferred sweetened and it was just sort of okay unsweetened. I guess it doesn't really matter because you can't get it anymore. The last of the teas that I'm going to share with you in this video all come from Tea Box Tea, and I, I I drank through a lot of them. If you watched my teas I drank in a day video, my most recent one, I kind of talk about Tea Box Tea. All of these are really old. I bought them back in 2015 during the Black Friday sale. Uh, despite that, most of them were still pretty fresh tasting. Most of these I have notes on. These two I don't, so I have the white berry, which is a blend of white tea, strawberry, raspberry, and spearmint. I cold steeped this one, but I forgot about it, and by the time I got to it, it was just like really bitter, uh, so I don't actually have an opinion on this. I had to throw it away. And then the other one is this Glen Burn Spring Chinary Black Tea, and uh, I, this must have been one that I had opened up back in 2015 because I felt like the, the freshness of this one was compromised. So again, I don't really have an opinion of this one. So the next one that I tried was a lavender spell and this was a blend of black tea, lavender, and cornflower. Now, I don't know what kind of black tea was used in this. Possibly a Darjeeling tea. I mean, I, all, I think in general, all the tea from Tea Box Tea is sourced from India. All I know is lavender spell was like really, really floral and really grassy. I sipped their Darjeeling Summer Black, which I really liked this one. Uh, this one was sweet and just like a really lovely floral, just like a really nice, balanced floral flavor. Next, we had a Tourism Black Tea. This was another really lovely uh, floral Darjeeling. Next, we have a Bottom Tan Autumn Black. And 
yet again another floral tea. So my notes on this say it's floral. I do notice something sweet and fruity well after the sip has finished. Kind of stringent, but it lends to a sweetness in the back of my throat. Um, but my favorite was probably this Habukal, Habukal Winter Frost Black. And this is from the Nil Nilgiri region. I actually steeped this one in my Gaiwan, even though you don't normally steep Indian teas in a Gaiwan. And I mean, these weren't like, like it's loose leaf, but it's not like full leaf. I mostly did it to just kind of go through the process of using my Gaiwan. I just sort of needed that meditative practice. Um, but I still really liked it. So this one was floral and woody with a hint of sweet fruit and just overall like a really, a really nice tea. They also had, um, at least when I purchased way back in 2015, they had like an Earl Grey collection. And uh, back in 2015, I mean, I had been drinking tea for, for, for a while then, like over five years. In my head, back then, Earl Grey was the tea that people who knew what they were talking about when they talked about tea, they drank Earl Grey. Like that was my con that like that was my perception of Earl Grey. Like like it just seemed really posh and like tea connoisseurs drank Earl Grey. <laughs> my opinion has since changed. I mean don't get me wrong, I love Earl Grey, but <laughs> my opinion has changed. So, but I, I had I had purchased like a like a collection a collection of just all of their Earl Greys and I don't know I think there was like 15 different Earl Greys in this particular collection. So I finished up this breakfast Earl Grey, which you saw in my teas that I drank in a day video, and and it was good, uh, but it wasn't my favorite in the collection because it was just it was it was more breakfast tea than it was Earl Grey. Like the bergamot oil that was in it. I really didn't taste it. Then we have this Imperial Earl Grey. And this is, instead of a black tea base, this is an oolong tea base. And um, overall, it was really nice. There was a nice floral aroma that was coming from the oolong, and of course the bergamot flavor. My favorite was probably, well my favorite of the Earl Grey collection that I sipped through this month was probably this Muscat Earl Grey. It was it was really it was it was light and delicate, and I really loved the floral grape flavors that were coming from the tea. I feel like it ran the risk of being overpowered by the bergamot oil, but it really wasn't. It was it was really nicely balanced. It this was good. I mean, this is one that I would have more of. It was it was it was really nice. It was really nice and light. Good for like. Good for like a sunny day. So yeah, that's what I drank this month. Not not a whole lot of Adagio teas, not a whole lot of flavored blends. I, I, I feel like I kind of, um, because of the atmosphere and especially the, the, the lack of shipping, I, I reached for a lot of the older teas in my collection because I just wasn't really sure when I was gonna be able to replace my newer teas. And I'm kind of glad that I did that because um, all of the teas that I have been drinking from Tea Box Tea that I bought a million years ago, they've all been really nice. I'm kind of disappointed that I have waited this long to go through them. So I mean, if you're looking for for a reasonably priced Indian tea, be sure to check out Tea Box Tea. I, I really I have really appreciated everything that I've had from them so far. Um, I'd have to say my absolute favorite though was the Jinjun Mei from Craft Leaf Teas. <sighs> I should probably do a taste test like on film with verdant teas. I'm always a little bit afraid to do that though because I don't think I'm always the most articulate when it comes to talking about how I experience tea, which I guess is kind of ironic seeing as I talk about tea on my YouTube channel like all the time. I mean, I, I feel really insecure when I when I post uh, those other videos too. Just Just I feel a little bit more insecure when I try to talk about tea that other people who know what they're talking about when they talk about tea talk about. <laughs> Did that make sense? So yeah, uh, that's what I drank through during the month of April. I actually sipped down quite a bit. I'm really proud of myself. Let me know about your April sips in the comment box below. What was your favorite for the month? And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.